today on Divorce Court. I'm in divorce court today because I thought I was marrying Mr. Right, but he turned out to be Mr. Wrong. I would describe Kimberly as selfish, lazy, delusional, and narcissistic. The money has stopped and the drama with his family has began. It's just become horrible. Kimberly's relationship with my family is so toxic that if it had a fume to it, then we would all have to clear the room right now. I didn't marry his family, and he needs to stop them from interrupting our marriage. In order for me to stay in this marriage, Kimberly would basically have to turn back time. I feel that my relationship is started as a love bomb, but now the affection and the attention has just completely disappeared. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Kimberly Tizeno and Willie Bessler. The two of you, get this, have been together for six months, Married for three months, you're already here to get a divorce. So, uh, and Ms. Tizena wants transitional support. So I'm going to start with you, Ms. Tizena. Why don't you tell me how this happened? Sure. Let me tell you first how we met. Um, I had just moved to Vegas. I wasn't having a lot of luck in the dating scene. Most of the guys in Vegas were, like, really cheap, didn't want to take me to nice restaurants. So I decided to be spontaneous one day, and I put an ad on Craigslist, mm -hmm. just asking for a date on Friday night, just somebody to take me out to a nice restaurant and enjoy their company. So uh, Willie responded. Uh, we exchanged numbers. We had a conversation on the phone. He sounded very intelligent. Uh, we talked about restaurants and gambling. I just thought, this is the perfect guy. Um, so shortly thereafter, we set up a date for the very next day. We went to a really, really nice restaurant. Um, after the restaurant, he took me gambling. He gave me money to gamble, which was like unheard of for a guy from Vegas. So I was really, really liking it. After that, we went out continuously every day to casinos. We would do staycations in nice hotel rooms. It was, it was like a fantasy. One day, he told me that I would be his wife, and I just kind of laughed it off. Like, how long had you been together? We had only been dating that? for like two weeks at that point. And I was like, yeah, he's joking. Um, but we continue seeing each other every single day, going out, just having lots and lots of fun. And then he brought it up again, and I told him that typically I don't date men with kids. He has three adult children. He told me, oh, no problem, my children are adults, they don't really bother me, they live out of town, so you'll never have to have any interaction. I'm very selfish. I want my husband all for myself. That's why it's I married nice him. It's nice to be self-aware. <laughs> it really is. If you're selfish, you, you need to know. Yeah, and I know that, and I told him, and he was like, he, he was okay with it. So, um, after we went on dates, I really became really comfortable with him, and I saw myself wanting to be with him forever if that type of treatment would last. Mm -hmm. So, when... So, so, so Mr. Be Belser, let me ask you this. It's mm -hmm. so far, is she accurate? with what she's told uh, me. For the most part, it wasn't every day. Um, there, we were together every other day because she had to rest every other day. She had to rest from the whining and dining? From, from us spending time together, she had to rest every other day. Now, so. you're a disabled vet. You could keep yes, going, but she had to rest. Well, that is true. I had to get my beauty rest <laughs> I, on I some days. I have multiple sclerosis, and I... Uh, I, I require rest because of my disability. MS, right. But I can go twice as much as her any day. Right, okay. That's, that's true. <laughs> what did you see in her in two weeks that made you tell her, you're gonna be my wife? Judge Toller, she was so awesome in the beginning. Um, she's a beautiful <laughs> lady. <laughs> we, uh, we spent four hours just talking in the uh, restaurant. And I mean, there was some, it was some little silly things that happened. Like, uh, I didn't get a chance to change my pants before we, we came out and I had on some sweatpants. So I, I changed my pants in the car while she was standing outside. I was like, if I would have known that things were going to go this well, I would strip it every first day. <laughs> but, that was funny. Um, she, she just showed me so much attention. She showed me that she cared. You know, uh, she was giving me everything that I needed. I don't know if it was because of me coming from an emotional place. Uh, mm -hmm. I had just lost my youngest daughter in oh. January. She was uh, 17. She died from a rare blood disease. I'm so very sorry. Yeah, but uh, she she was filling the void. That you had I the needed. right woman at the right time with the exactly. with, with the right amount of joy and love. You say that the moment he said I do. Everything changed. What happened? Everything changed. For me, the pivotal moment was, I'm now your wife. I need control. So I asked for his phone. I started going through his phone. 
I started seeing text messages, messages from his daughter. She has kids, she has a baby daddy, but she's asking my husband for money on a regular basis. And not just small amounts, like anywhere from a couple hundreds to a couple thousands. And not only her, but also his ex-wife is also texting him and asking for money and messaging him on Facebook. And so when I confront him about this, he's like, this is my family. I have to have a relationship with my ex-wife in order to have a relationship with my adult kids, which I don't understand. And he was just like, it's not gonna change. Let me ask you a question. You said, I am now your wife, so I need control. Did you have any inkling that he was doing anything wrong before you decided to go through his phone? No, not really. I'm just a very but you, you, you curious person. you just felt that was your right. Yeah, yeah. As, as wife. Mr. Belser, what is your uh, take on what happened after you said I do? I didn't really feel like, you know, anything changed as far as what I was doing. The only difference was she saw texts of things that I was already doing before right. we got married. And you stopped mm -hmm. spending money on me as much. Yeah, we stopped that, going he, out. Did, did that, why don't you tell me, you you say the whining and dining stopped, the gambling, what happened? So I put two and two together after reading those texts. I'm no longer getting as much because his daughter is asking for money, his ex-wife is asking for money, and that's taking money away from the household and Mr. me. Mr. Belser, did you, once you got married, did you stop whining and dining her? No, ma'am, I have a totally different take on what happened. Tell me. Kimberly, after reading the text, started he, she, like she said to you, she put two and two together. She has a tendency to jump to conclusions. Because I am disabled, because of all the things that I was doing, she would say stuff like, well, we need to put together a savings, and I don't want you doing this, and I don't want you doing that, because I feel like it may hurt you. And I said, you know what? Just be who you were when we met, and everything will be fine. That's you not you the just point. stay the way you were. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, it was more like her, her own concerns and her own jumping to conclusions that led her to believe that things had to change and therefore she changed the way she was. Mm -hmm. I didn't change what I would do for her. Kim Kimberly knows that I would give her anything if I could, but I didn't try to give her any less and I wasn't giving her any less than she asked for. But she found out you had more, so she was entitled, she felt entitled to that increase. Uh, I don't really have a lot, Your Honor. Yeah. I, I'm just a very thrifty gentleman. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, so, mm -hmm. you know, our, our motto is uh, adapt and overcome, and that's what I do. Right? He was a Marine. All right, though, All right. I got a picture of the beginning and the whining and the dining and the perspectives of both parties with regard to that. But now I want to talk about the duties of husband and wife and how you feel that those things weren't being met. He suggested that one of his friends move in and do those things for us. And I was completely in agreement. I don't have to cook or clean and she'll do it, sure. So <laughs> she moves in. But little do I know, this friend who's only supposed to be cleaning and cooking, she's always also trying to take my husband. Now, Mr. Belser has indicated that he's unhappy or became unhappy once you got married because you wouldn't do any domestic duties. You don't work outside the home, correct? That is correct. And he says you didn't do anything in it. You say, however, that you weren't the domestic type and you told him that up front. Why don't you tell me about the arguments you've had regarding your domesticity or lack thereof? <laughs> um, I told him from the beginning, first of all, there's a huge age difference. Um, I am 33, he is 46. So he has the opportunity to marry a younger woman. Mm -hmm. I hope he didn't think that just came with no stipulations. Mm -hmm. I told him that I don't cook, I don't clean, and he was okay with that. He was like, that's fine. So I guess after we got married, he noticed that I really wasn't going to do it and the house just got a little bad. So mm -hmm. he suggested that one of his friends move in and do those things for us. And I was completely in agreement. I don't have to cook or clean and she'll do it, sure. So <laughs> she moves in, but little do I know, this friend who's only supposed to be cleaning and cooking, she's also trying to take my husband. Um, I what thought, was she doing? I saw a text where she said, I love you. Um, he didn't know I saw that. Um, also, one day they were in the kitchen and they didn't know I was there. She slapped him on the butt. <laughs> I went back in the room and I didn't say anything. I didn't confront them there. I went back in the room and I, I asked him about it and he said he didn't notice it, which I don't understand how he wouldn't mm. feel 
this lady's hand slapping him on the butt. I thought it was you because you were standing. She's right much there. bigger okay. than me. Now, now, so. now, Mr. Belson, what's your 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 uh, <laughs> take on the domestic issue? First of all, when we were dating, she did at least attempt to cook for me on multiple occasions. It wasn't like she said, "I'm never going to do it." We were always dining out. Yeah, but you attempted to cook as and well. Maybe some leftovers. <laughs> And, uh, did she tell you she wasn't the domestic type, though? Did she tell she you that? She did tell me she wasn't the domestic type, but my, my caregiver was there for that capacity. I had, I had caregivers that visited, mm -hmm. and I have a live-in caregiver. Did you expect her to become that way once you got married? Did you... I, did, I didn't change my expectations. If she would have kept doing exactly what she did when we got married, I would have been just fine. But you say she stopped. She stopped doing she anything. Stopped. Well, what she started doing was harping on every negative thing that she could possibly do. One of her favorite sayings is, marriage is hard. And my answer to her is, when you take actions to make it hard, of course it's going to be hard. Okay. The woman that you moved in is Robin Huff. She is here. So I would like to hear from her. <laughs> Ms. Huff, how are you? Good. Good. Now, I understand that you were Mr. Belser's caregiver before he got married. Is that correct? Long before, yes. Long before he got married. Yes. Okay. Ms. Huff, what did you see of Ms. Tizino? What did you think of her? She puts an entirely new meaning on the word lazy. Don't get out of bed before noon. No. She wouldn't do, lift a finger to do anything. That's she what never, you're here for. She never... <laughs> You're the maid. Stop. I am not the maid. I'm the caregiver. <laughs> His caregiver. Not your I'll personal come to find servant. That out. She knew he was disabled and sick before she married him. She refuses to do anything for him. That's what you're there for. Before I got there, she would allow him to go by himself. He has blackouts and seizures. It's not safe for him to be alone, but she didn't care. She let him go by himself because she wanted to sleep. That was more important to her than his safety. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there is no love loss here. Mm. But I want to make sure there isn't anything inappropriate going on over here. So I want to talk about your true feelings for Mr. Belser and if things aren't a little more complicated than they appear. So I'm not like her. I don't have to try to earn his love. I'm not trying to get with him. I already have him. She's mm -hmm. trying to get with him, so she does any and everything he says. Ms. Huff, let me ask you, and I want you to be honest. Do you have a thing for Mr. Belser? Would you like to replace her? Do you feel your spouse changed after saying, I do? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. Do you have a response to Ms. Huff's comments that she made about your lack of, uh, it's not just the cooking and cleaning. She says you didn't even look after his needs, his physical and health needs. What do you have to say to that? Well, with Willie, I always ask him before he goes or does anything if he's okay, if he needs my help. If he does not ask for it, then I assume that he does not need it. So I'm not like her. I don't have to try to earn his love. I'm not trying to get with him. I already have him. She's mm -hmm. trying to get with him, so she does any and everything he says. I can recall one time I didn't want to drive to a casino just because it was so late at night and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. He calls her Five minutes later, she's in the driveway waiting. Like, she hops out of bed. She just jumps at his every command, and I'm not gonna do that. Ms. Huff, let me ask you, and I want you to be honest. Do you have a thing for Mr. Belser? Would you like to replace her? No. You never had a crush on him? No, he is like a little brother to so me. So why'd you text him, I love you? Because I love him like a brother. Oh, like a brother. Yeah. Oh, really. Mr. Belser, I understand things got very contentious between these two and remain so. Is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. No. Why not ask Ms. Huff to leave? Because she is your wife. That's funny. There, there was actually a large altercation between the two of them. We, um, they were using me as the middle guy right. when something bothered each one of them. And I basically told them in a car one day, you know, if you need to talk to her about something, you need to talk to her. If you need to talk to her, uh, speaking don't, to both yeah, of them, teach, speak right, to don't, other, don't right. put me in the middle. But they, and they continued to put me in the middle for certain things. And there was a large altercation, verbal altercation <laughs> between Kimberly and Robin in the hallway of my home. And basically, it was put out there. I told Robin straight up, Kimberly is my wife. If she wants you gone, 
you're going to have to leave. And her, she said, when do you want me to go? But her and Kimberly were talking. I did say, Kimberly, now you realize if she leaves, then some of the duties that she's doing, you're going to have to take up the slack. And then she said, well, you have a good point. There's no need for her to go. <laughs> yeah, if she can separate the two, cleaning, cooking, that is her duty, not trying to get with my husband. If she can distinguish between the two, we wouldn't have a problem. I got it. I know what's happening. I understand as you leave from this three-month marriage, you would like $3,000 in transitional support, and we will discuss that. How long should you know someone before getting married? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Huff, thank you so much for your perspective and for your care of our former Marine here. And please have a seat. And I want to talk to these two. Ms. Tazina, why do you believe you are entitled to transitional support? Well, Willie takes care of the finances. Um, when I noticed that I wasn't able to do as much, I wasn't able to gamble as much because I just figured that we were having money issues, I told him I wanted to get a job. And he told me no. He wouldn't let me use the car to even attempt to go look for a job. So I'm left without any money. He canceled all my credit cards. He took me off of the bank account. So I'm pretty much destitute. Mm -hmm. So he needs to give me that money so that I can try to get a place, which in Vegas, a place is like $800 mm -hmm. a month, plus utilities. Were you working when you met him? Hmm. Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Belser, your response to that. Did you preclude her from, actively preclude her from getting a job? No, ma'am. This is uh, taken out of perspective. What she does is she will apply and go to interviews. And she started four jobs since we've been together. And none of them lasted past the second day at lunchtime. And why, why is that? Because every time because I start a job, quit. he says, we have to go out of town somewhere. We've been to California, Cincinnati in like the last couple of weeks, so I couldn't work. No, the jobs, you quit the jobs before the, before the, the traveling. Trips. No, yeah. he would yeah. always tell me Mr. that we Belser, have. Mr. Belser, are you done, done? Judge Toller, I love Kimberly to death. And if she could be the woman that I met in the beginning, I would spend the rest of my life with her. But she has a level of delusion and dysfunction that is beyond tolerable. Right. So you're done. Yes, ma'am. That's game. And that's fun. Anybody can be delightful during the dating process. Anybody can be fun and lighthearted and free. But when you show up in the in the beginning of a relationship talking about what you're not going to do and let another woman in the house, all that kind of thing. That's who she is for real, and she wants the money, and she wants the swag, and she wants the fun, but offers you nothing. You're disabled, and you're not, she's not helping you out. She's not caring for you. Let me tell you what. Delusional is an accurate term. If you think I'm going to let you come in here, your little sad admonishments about I'm not domestic notwithstanding, you showed up not a wife, you showed up with no heart, you showed up with no care, you showed up with no concern, you did nothing for the brother, the brother got nothing from you, and you're not going to get anything from me. This matter is a game. <laughs> it clear that he really doesn't want to be with me any longer. Possibly we are going to go with a divorce. Um, if that is the case, I would definitely always want to be friends because we have great times together. We have a lot in common. So I would definitely love to have a very lasting relationship as a friend if that's all that we can maintain. I lost my daughter and a lot of family members felt that I was coming at this relationship from a place of uh, um, pure emotions, uh, filling a void or whatever. And I don't feel that way. Um, I, I hate that I did lose my, my daughter, but Kimberly didn't have anything to do with trying to fill anything that was missing in my life from that. 